Hey y'all, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for action figures and comics history. And we are back with another Marvel Legends mystery box. If you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you know that these mystery boxes are actually my collection of Marvel Legends figures that I have gathered over the past 20 years. I've been collecting Marvel Legends since they first came out, and these are all the figures that, even though they're great, I don't have room to display them. So we've been going box by box through all of these, pulling out the figures, going through their history, learning a little bit, and having some fun as we go. And this is a box that I know you guys are going to love because it is all Wolverine. So one of the things that I've been doing with these mystery boxes is as I've gone through them and as I've created the other videos on my channel, I've been trying to get my figures into some sense of order so that it's much easier for me to find one when I need one for reference or just so that things are much better organized. And so one of the things I've done is as I've gone through other boxes, I've put together all of these Wolverine figures and this is going to be so fun to go through. I mean, this is a box full of Wolverines. It is unbelievable how many great figures have been made of Wolverine in Marvel Legends. So let's grab one and get started. And we're going to grab this one that's right here on the top first because it's in a little Ziploc bag and that's for a reason. Oh yeah, let's get this guy out of here. Got to be careful with this dude because this is the brown suit retro card back wave Wolverine. It is truly one of my favorite Wolverine figures that has been made. I really think it captures that John Byrne classic Wolverine art. But what makes this one so special are these metal claws. That's right. This guy has got custom claws that came from customizer can of beams. And not only do these things look absolutely great, even if they fall off, they are kind of super sharp, so you actually have to be careful with him. I put this dude, when I put this box together, I put him in a Ziploc so that I would not lose these metal claws. I bet when we get to the end of this, there's going to be a ton of claws just sitting in the bottom. But for my favorite version of Wolverine, <clears throat> the brown suit Wolverine, had to go with the metal claws for this guy. So we're going to set him over to the side so that we don't lose him. Now, I love brown suit Wolverine, but this may be one of my favorite incarnations of Wolverine. This is Wolverine from Astonishing X-Men. So this was the series that Josh Whedon wrote and John Cassidy drew, and this thing is just straight out of a John Cassidy drawing. It has all of that incredible detail, that fine line work that he puts into his art. You can see just the, the different... Even the stitching of the leather on this suit comes through. You can see it across the chest there and how this how this looks like a leather bodysuit that Wolvie is wearing. Now, this is an older Toy Biz figure. It has those funky Toy Biz joints. But not only is this just a perfect representation of the artwork of the comic, I love the size of it. It's a little hard to tell without another figure in the panel, but this guy is short, just like Wolverine is meant to be. So this is truly one of my favorite Wolverine figures, obviously based on the original yellow and blue costume, but with its own little touch, you know, with its own little John Cassidy touch. Oh yeah. Let's pull this guy out. Okay, so here we have one of the very first Marvel Legends Wolverines. So they had done like a, a Wolverine two pack and I think that it just never got released, and so they threw this in to the Marvel Legends. You can see it doesn't have the same type of articulation that we saw even in our very earliest Marvel Legends. He does have these kind of wonky ball-jointed hips, but there's nothing through the abdomen, and he has this face that has the visible eyes, not like what we were used to seeing in the comics. Got the classic Toy Biz finger bend. Let's see, there may be a, a date somewhere on here. Oh, I think it's right there. You guys might be able to see it better than I can, but I think this is like 2001. So this is truly one of the absolute earliest six inch Marvel Legend Wolverine figures. They use this body a couple different ways. I bet you we're gonna find some more that came off of this body frame while we're in here. Oh God, it just keeps getting better and better. So this is what I believe is the most recent yellow suit Wolverine. This one with the butterfly joints, God, I love that. You know, cause you can really 
Look at how you can really stretch his arms back because of those butterfly joints. And they managed to do it while including the little epaulets on his shoulders, but it doesn't prevent him from getting into these amazing Wolverine poses. You know, you can get good, good crotch uh, shrinkage there. That's really not the word that I was going for, but you, he can hunch down is I think closer to what I was trying to say so that he, he has that, you know, that Art Adams look where you've got this like really hunched over Wolverine coming right at you. Oh man, this is this is just so good. And if I didn't love the brown suit, I would maybe put my my metal claws on this guy because he is perfect. Just, just a perfect Wolverine. Let's look at some variants because there's plenty of yellow and browns. Let's look and see what else is in here. Hey, it's Patch. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. So there was a time in the comics where the X-Men were believed to be dead. And they actually went and spent some time in the Outback. And it's really one of the better runs on the series. There were some kind of cool people that were part of the team at that time, like Dazzler and Longshot. That was when <clears throat> Psylocke was sort of first on the team. But at the same time, Marvel had launched a Wolverine solo series. You know, he had finally gotten his own solo series. He had originally had the five-issue miniseries that was written by Chris Claremont and drawn by Frank Miller, which is a masterpiece and really kind of set the foundation for Wolverine's personality. But when it came time to give him his own solo series, they had to kind of give him a secret identity since the X-Men were technically dead in the Marvel Universe. And that is where Patch comes from. And so here is Wolverine as Patch because truly... There's no way that anyone could tell that this is Wolverine. I mean, that that looks absolutely nothing like Wolverine with the with just the uh, the stockings over his eyes. He did come with this sweet katana blade, and he tried not to pop his claws during those comic runs, but he did it anyway because he's Wolverine. Yeah, old man Logan. So I believe this is the one that came in the two pack with Hawkeye from the uh, Mark Miller, Steve McNiven, Old Man Logan comic. I thought that book was so great when it first came out. Uh, Rereading it, it, it has some holes in it, but the art, McNiven's art, is still just brilliant. And that is a very, very accurate Steve McNiven head sculpt. So very happy that we got a true Old Man Logan. And of course, they were able to use this body for some other Logan figures as well. Speaking of... Here is Hugh Jackman as Logan. Look at how feral he looks, but it still captures Hugh Jackman's facial likeness really great. I like that they made the claws different. You know, that these claws are the thicker based movie claws that look as though they're coming directly out of the back of his hands. That's a nice touch, lots of good detail. He's got the Indian head belt buckle. If you can see that, that is just spectacular. Kicking some acid wash jeans because, you know, that's what everybody needs. Got a good plaid work shirt if you're up in the Pacific Northwest. And just a rockin' facial sculpt of a very, very angry Wolverine. Even look at the nice paint apps that, that show that, like, this leather jacket is just worn all the way through. This is the kind of detail that Hasbro has really stepped up their game with, and I love it. I mean, they're, they're going all out. But a lot of this look is based off of this Wolverine figure right here. So this is the Wolverine figure from Diamond Select. So it's a little bit bigger. It's more of a seven inch scale than the six inch scale of Marvel Legends. But this is the days of future past Wolverine. So this was the very end of the Claremont burn run in the comics. After the Dark Phoenix saga, they had kind of a future story where mutants had been hunted down and killed by the Sentinels, and there were only a few mutants left, one of them being Wolverine, who, as an older man, was part of the resistance trying to take down the Sentinel regime. And they sent Kate Pride, the adult Kitty Pride, back into the past to try to prevent the future that occurred, and Wolverine meets a spectacular end. If you have not read those two issues, it's an absolute must. And 
As a matter of fact, uh, if you guys have been watching our channel, you know that this past summer, I've called it the summer of Spidey, and we've been doing a ton of Spider-Man videos, but I'm thinking about moving into the fall with the fall of the mutants. And one of those things that I'd like to do during that fall is do a run through the Claremont burn issues and look at them through the eyes of action figures. So if you're somebody who enjoyed my history lessons on Spider-Man and all of the figures that have been produced by him, hopefully you'll let me know some feedback in the comments if you'd like to see that same thing happen through the X-Men titles. Uh, let's grab one of the best ones. Oh my gosh. This is a figure that not everybody knows about because it didn't come in the classic Marvel Legends line. This was in the X-Men Classics spinoff line, but this is the House of M Wolverine. So House of M was a storyline where the mutants, where Scarlet Witch basically kind of remade the world and the mutants won and all of the mutants got their fondest wishes. Magneto was kind of the ruler of the earth where Homo Superior would reign supreme. The Scarlet Witch and Pietro the Quicksilver, his family were by his side. All the different mutants got their wishes. Well, unfortunately for Wolverine, his fondest wish came true. He had all of his memories restored to him. So his secretive past that he had searched and fought for forever was given back to him by the Scarlet Witch during the House of M storyline. What that meant was he was one of the few people on Earth who remembered what things were like before the House of M. And so he took it as his mission to bring this down and restore continuity to where it needed to be. And I'm so glad that uh, Toy Biz made this spectacular figure of Wolverine in his House of M suit, complete with this like super awesome like shield jetpack. Wolvie is like a member of shield at this time. And so this is him in his uniform. But look at this head sculpt. I mean, look at all the detail work that went into that. It's one of the best Wolverine head sculpts that we've ever had in Marvel Legends and truly a gem of a figure from a really spectacular story that sometimes gets forgotten about. Talk about another cool story. How about the team suit Wolverine? So this came from the John, excuse me, the Chris Claremont, Jim Lee era of X-Men when Jim Lee was kind of hitting his rise as a superstar artist. And they had a, a space adventure with the Shear, I believe. And you had like Gambit and Forge and, and Wolverine in these uh, team suits. And so we got, we got this one. This head really doesn't really fit Jim Lee's style. It's almost more of a Joe Maggiera style with the just really super elongated, almost anime-like hair. But it's so cool to have Wolvie in this team suit with his claws. Ah, X-Force. So Wolvie as a kind of mutant spy killing machine team. Uh, I actually didn't read that book, but I've heard some really good stuff about it. It's still on that great base buck. It has these nice uh, butterfly shoulders, but... It's a good figure, nice, nice figure, and it goes well with the other X-Force figures. Uh, here we go. So a little bit of a, a more current Wolverine. You can see that this, this version of his suit takes a lot of ideas from the Astonishing X-Men suit. You can see some of those similarities there. Uh, obviously, the kind of overdone gold belt and the gold X aren't there. But I always think it's sweet when they give us these accessories like this folded down mask over his back and a good comic accurate Wolverine head. Pretty cool. Oh no, you're, I'll save you for later. Let's go with this. Oh, yes, indeed. So for years and years and years, this was the Wolverine that was in my X-Men display. So this is the brown suit Wolverine from Marvel Legends. Uh, hopefully we can read a year on there. 2004 is the date of this. So this thing is 18 years old. This this figure, almost 18 years old. This figure can vote if it wanted to. But look at that stocky frame. Just look at how incredible he looks in these, you know, crouch down poses. He also has butterfly joints, which was relatively new for the time. But again, it gives us that, that great lean back that he has. Perfect claws. 
He's got some hair on his arms the way Wolverine should. And even though Toy Biz's hips were always a little funky, they really worked uh, for this figure. And he had a decent ab crunch so that you could, you know, get him down into this kind of a look. Oh, this is so good. I, I Honestly, this is as good as any figure of Wolverine that has ever been made. And it's one of the very first ones. He came with like a little dojo accessory. And I believe he was in the same line of figures as the Deadpool that came with Dupe, which was not a very easy line to find back on the shelves uh, back in the day. But brilliant, brilliant brown suit Wolverine. Let's grab another brown suit. So this is the Diamond Select version. And I don't like it as much. I, one thing I will say is, do you see how the the kind of wings of his mask sort of flare out to the side. I've always felt like that had a, a really cool Dave Cockrum vibe to it. You know, that's a little bit more of a Dave Cockrum look. Dave Cockrum was the artist on X-Men just after new X-Men took off uh, and really kind of helped to build that franchise, which then John Byrne and Chris Claremont, uh, with Byrne taking over the art chores, took to the highest of heights. But Obviously, Dave Cockrum did not draw the brown suit. That was something that happened later. But it just, the flair of that kind of matches that. We may have another Diamond Select in here where we can see it a little bit better. Yep, okay. Here's another Hugh Jackman. A little bit calmer face, but still just a spectacular rendition. Has those great, great claws coming out. Still has the, the same pants and the, the Indian head belt. But he's got his dog tags. So just, you know, so good. They've done so good with these. This one's not my favorite. I think this was another kind of X-Men Classics one. A little bit more cartoony with the really broad shoulders, kind of a, a larger head. He's gotten kind of loose over time. But, you know, if you're just looking for a good toy of Wolverine to play with, hard to argue with that. Yeah, this is another of those retro card back brown ones. This one I've actually taken the claws out of. But, Let's okay. So let's while we've got it, let's compare this to the one that I just was raving about, the 2004 Toy Biz version. So when you look at the head sculpt, as good as that new Hasbro one is, I think I prefer the Toy Biz head sculpt. The body, uh, pretty tough. It's hard to argue with this body. Just that, that great stocky frame articulation. You know, we've got the weird ball hips here, whereas we have the newer Legends hips. I mean, it's hard to say that this isn't a better figure, but there's such a nostalgia that goes with this one that, mm, I don't know, hard to say. Two good figures. Age of Apocalypse. Okay, full disclosure, I've actually never read it. Uh, I've got all these Age of Apocalypse figures. There's even more Age of Apocalypse figures coming, and I'm going to have to go back and read it. But that was during a time in my life when I wasn't into comics. The manga, manga, manga style of Joe Mad wasn't really for me at the time. I've kind of grown into it more, but it's still pretty sweet to see Wolvie with his with his stump right here. And there may even be one where the stump has the claws coming out. I know that Toy Biz did that. Here's a bag of Wolverine parts. We got a couple extra heads. Got some feral looking stuff there. Okay, so maybe I was wrong. Maybe this is the old man Logan that uh, maybe they both were, but. This old man Logan is fantastic with the duster. You know, he's got that that Western duster jacket with the big flaps. Oh my gosh. Again, it was a good book. You know, you got to go back and read it. If, even if you just read it for McNiven's art and the finish where, where Wolverine turns it around. I don't want to spoil too much, but let me tell you, they did not hold back in the finish of this book. Okay, here's the Diamond Select first appearance Wolverine. So, obviously, the first appearance Wolverines are pretty easy to spot. You know, Wolvie has the whiskers on his mask. He has the much smaller wings that head up. Uh, otherwise, the body is basically the exact same as that brown suit one that we saw. But I do appreciate the fact that they kind of made the claws look like they were drawn by Herb Trimpey in Incredible Hulk 180 and 181. If you remember, Wolverine actually first appeared in an Incredible Hulk comic. He had a cameo in issue 180, and then he had his first full appearance fighting Hulk and Wendigo because he's five foot two and he should certainly fight two giant monsters. And he darn near won in that. 
Uh, so really, you know, that's obviously one of the key books of the Bronze Age. So if you don't have one, you can always go online and read it. But very classic first appearance Wolverine. Oh, okay. I think I'm wrong. I think this was maybe the first Marvel Legends one because it has the T-jointed hips. Whereas this one that's basically the same, a little bit of a different head sculpt, but still kind of that same frame came out later with the with the more more articulated hips, but, you know, didn't really fit in with those great first line, first sets of Marvel Legends, which were uh, Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, and, oh yeah, Toad. It did kind of fit in with the Toad, because I think they were sculpted at the same time. Another version of Old Man Logan, and another version of that crazy Wolverine head. Oh, third one. Okay, so here we go again. So again, this is that same, this is the same body, right? This is the exact same body, but this one is the unmasked, just been to the dentist Wolverine figure. Ah, here we go. This is the Marvel Legends first appearance Wolverine. And, oh, it is so much better than that Diamond Select one. First of all, great size, like really terrific size for Wolverine. That head sculpt really captures the snarl that he had in that first issue. But the big difference is in that very first appearance, his eyes weren't whited out. You could actually see his eyes drawn in behind the mask. And that is what this figure that came with the Incredible Hulk in a two-pack, that's what this figure represents. So I am certainly going to give the nod to the Marvel Legends first appearance Wolverine over the Diamond Select first appearance Wolverine. Oh, that is great. That is truly classic. But not to be outdone, before there was Hasbro, there was Toy Biz. And Toy Biz gave us a shot at a first appearance Wolverine as well. He's got his whiskers. He does have whited out eyes. They both have smaller uh, wings, those black wings on the side of the mask. But certainly the Hasbro one is far more comic accurate. So that's a great figure, Toy Biz. You know I love you. But this is one where Hasbro takes the cake, and it's really not even close. And to finish out, here's another one of those. Why do I buy so many of these things? All right, this is, you know, just another good butterfly-jointed Wolverine. Not as good as the other new yellow one that we saw. I'm not sure which, which set that came with. This one we got to talk about, though. This is the Frank Quietly-inspired Wolverine from New X-Men. So right after the first X-Men movie came out, I guess right around the year 2000 or so, there was a big push to kind of make superheroes more realistic in the world. You know, even in that first X-Men movie, they made a joke about wearing yellow spandex. You actually go outside in these things? What would you prefer, yellow spandex? And I get it. I mean... It, it, it would have looked kind of funky on the screen, although I think we can argue that the MC, 